QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022 Make Loan Payments. Get ready because we bookkeeping pros are moving up the hilltop with QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file going through the setup process with the view drop down the open windows list on the left hand side company drop down home page to the middle maximizing it to the gray area reports drop down company and financial balance sheet standard customizing that report then changing the date range 0101 to 212 31 to 2 fonts and numbers changing the font up to 14 okay yes please and okay reports drop down taking a look at company and financial profit and loss range change 010122 123122 customizing that report fonts and the numbers changing the font to the number 14 okay yes please and okay reports drop down and then looking at the account and taxes trial balance range change from 010122 to 123122 customizing that report to the fonts and numbers changing the font to the number 14 okay yes please and okay so we're going to go back up to the balance sheet now in prior presentations we put together our amortization schedule we're focusing in on the loan payable so we're going to imagine that this is our loan payable we have the am the amortization table for it again i know that we have two transactions that caused this loan payable but we're going to imagine it's at the seventy-two thousand, and we're going to uh, use that amortization table to then record the payments remembering that you have a few different options when you're thinking about your loan payable it's a little bit more confusing than just writing a check because if you go over to the home page here and you were simply to write a check with this form or possibly use bank feeds normally there's only two accounts that would be impacted which you would think would be a decrease to the checking account due to the check itself other side then going to the loan payable reduction possibly but there is interest involved therefore there's three accounts that are impacted not only that but those accounts will change in terms of dollar amounts allocated between the interest and the principal in accordance with the amortization table therefore we can't simply memorize the transaction if we want to break out the interest and the principal per transaction you may still want to memorize the transaction simplifying it so the data input would be easier and then basically make an adjustment periodically at the end of the month or the year you can do that let's just take a quick look at that in more detail back to the balance sheet you can see for example we will record the first couple transactions according to this amortization table the payments are going to be the 1358.73 but the first one has interest in principle of 300 and 1058 versus about the 295 and the 1063 that means that the two payments will have to differ each time so we're going to actually record those differences each time or you could basically say i'm just going to record say the standard payment amount and then possibly periodically possibly at the end of the year here after 12 months you might then say now i'm going to do my adjusting entry at the year end and break out the interest portion by reallocating basically adjusting your loan balance to this principal amount the other side going to interest so that you can basically record the interest on a periodic basis in that way if you so choose that's another option that you might have and you might work with an accountant or your cpa firm that way and say in that way you can tell them hey look i'm just going to record my books on a cash basis i'm going to record all of the payments that are going to the loans to the related loan account and i would like you to break out periodically monthly or at the end of the year the interest portion by tying the loan balances to the amortization tables that makes the data input easy and it makes that periodic adjustment being done fairly easy as well being done by a third party to do that or you could do it yourself on an annual basis okay so let's break this out we're going to start with this first payment right here and record that so i'll make that green to indicate that's the one we're going to record that's what that green means so then we're going to go back let's do this in the home page i'm going to do this with the checking account we'll just write a check for it so we'll enter the check here you can also enter this directly into the register if you were to if you were to enter it to the register but i think it's a little bit 
easier to see the splits between the two accounts that will be impacted. I'm going to keep the check number. I'm going to write this imagining it is as of the beginning of our second month, which was 020122. Uh, and I'm going to write this and we're going to imagine this goes to, I think our bank was, we'll call it Chase for the loan. And then we're going to say the amount, the decrease to the loan is going to be the 135873. 1358.73. And then on the expense side, we're going to have to choose two accounts down here in order to get the other side to work. We got an interest expense of the 300. So let's see if they gave us an interest expense because it's the first time we've entered to it. We do have it. So QuickBooks gave us that in our list of accounts when we set up our company file interest. And we might put in the memo like first loan payment. We might number the payment, in other words, so we can mark it to the amortization table. You don't have to, but you could. And then the other side is going to decrease the loan balance. So the loan was up top in the liability section up here. It's a liability. It's a loan payable. That's the one. And this one isn't for, this one should be for 300, I should say. And that makes this one then equal to the 1058.73. 1058.73 and we might do the same note or memo as the note is called it's not a note it's a memo it's a memo so there we have it so there were the two what's going to happen here the checking account's going to decrease due, due to it being a check by the 1358.73 the other side's going to go to the income statement of 300 and reduce the liability of the 1058.73 the loan payable Let's save it. Let's close it. Let's check it out. Saving, closing, step one and two, followed by checking it out. Let's go to the trial balance first. Checking account, double checking on it, double clicking on it, to check on it. Down here, we then have, there it is, our 1358.73 for the full amount of the check. Closing it back out. Other side, we can say, the interest there's the interest if i double click on it now we have our interest there that looks good closing it back out then we got the loan payable here's the loan payable is that that's the payroll liability where's there's the loan loan payable has now been decreased by the 1058.73 it's now at the 70,941.27 which should match if everything is as it should be the 70,941.27 on our amortization table. So it looks like everything has been done properly and in accordance with the rules and the regulations that have been put in place. Let's go back to the profit and loss again. Notice you could see this on the P and L. This is for the for the two months because two months have passed now. You can also see this if I was just to look at the month of February, if I was to go, now we're starting basically a new month. So I could say, all right, 020122 to 022822. And now all we have there thus far in the month of February for 2022, we've got $300. So now let's add another one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to the end of the month so that we can add another one here just to see the difference between the payments and what kind of problems that could cause when you're trying to memorize transactions and then your, your remedy to that could be what could be the remedy to that because if you use bank feeds you can't memorize the transaction as easily you could remedy that with basically that adjusting entry process we talked about let's go back in and imagine this one happened at the end of the same month so that we're still in february because we're working in february but i want to make another payment so let's do it again we're going to go to the home write another check another check and then this is going to be a double check. We're doing a double check this today with two checks. 022822. At the end of the month, this is going to go to Chase. And then this amount is going to be the same. 135873. So that's going to be the... And it should have memorized it. I don't know why it didn't memorize it here. I'm going to try to go up to my editing feature and see. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to record it. And go to edit and preferences and i want to go to this general where it says automatically recall i'm going to try the second one where it says automatically recall last transaction automatically recall last transaction and okay 
see if that memorizes it here. So I'd like to, to pull up the data from the last transaction. So then we're going to say this is going to be on 02282 uh, two, chase. And there we go. So now it pulled up the last transaction as we set that, changed that setting. So that's nice, but it's not going to be exactly the same because although this amounts the same, the interest and principal have now changed. And that's the issue. That's the issue. That's the problem. You can't memorize it just like that. Because now I got to change it to 295.59. Two, so this has to be 295.59 now. And this needs to be then 106314. 106314. So if you want to memorize the transaction, again, you could just make it go to the loan payable, which is incorrect, not recording the interest, and then adjust it the interest periodically using an adjusting entry, possibly with the help of an accountant or a CPA firm or your tax preparer if they would like to do that with you and for you. So this will then be decreasing the checking account by this amount. The interest will then be going up by this decrease in the net income. Loan payable is going to decrease by the 1,063.14, bringing the loan balance to what it should be on the amortization table. Let's check it out. Save it, close it, check it out. Let's look at it on the trustee TB first, because that's a really nice place to see everything in one place. So we're going to go into the checking account, checking account. Now we got the same check at the beginning and end of the month, closing it out. So no change between the two transactions there. But when I go down to the interest, that's when the change happens. That's when the funny business is happening here. There's business going on, but it's a funny business because now you got 300 and you got the 295.59. And then the loan payable is closing this back out. If I go to the loan payable, the business is funny here as well because the loan payable, if I double click on it, then has that difference in the reductions. But the end amount is at that 69,870,813 matching, hopefully, the 69,870,813 on the amortization table, giving us the satisfactory feeling that things have been done the way they're supposed to be done. That's how we do things. So I'm going to close this back out. And then if I go back to the balance sheet, of course, you can find that same information on the balance sheet with the loan payable and the checking account and the income statement side of things on the P&L would be the interest. I'm going to go back up to the trial balance. You could check your numbers with the trustee TB. Notice I'm, I'm running it for the entire year here. And you can take a look at those numbers. If they tie out, great. If they don't, change your date range. Check it out. We will be running a transaction detail at the end of the section. So you can use that to check things out. We're going to try to make those backup files as well. Hopefully those will work properly with the new changes on QuickBooks side of things for the login and everything. So that you can use them to rework something or jump forward or back in a problem and redo stuff if you want.